All right, guys, we're going to welcome back to the Everything Eligible podcast. Today, me and Nick here will be looking at the 2023 Military Bowl, Wednesday, December 27th, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Hokies, seven and a half point favorites, live from Navy Marine Corps Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. Look at these offenses, you know, for Virginia Tech. You know, it seemed like they really could have had something going this year. Grant Wells and some added pass catchers in the portal really didn't start off all that well. You know, Grant got hurt, allowed Kyron Drones to step in, and he didn't look back. 58% completion rating, 166 yards per game through the air. Great efficiency, you know, 15 touchdowns, three picks. More importantly, though, 642 and four touchdowns rushing. This is a true dual threat with some good sizes, 234 pounds, that, you know, had 50-plus rushing in numerous games this season. This is a guy that was very effective. Uh, you know, we, we want to see, really see him find the end zone more, and he hasn't did that on the ground set, set, since September. Um, but this is a guy that picks up a lot of yards, and the offense significantly got better with him in the game, Nick. Um, you know, you look at Jalen Lane, Daquan Felton, the nice wide receiver duo, both of 500-plus yards, a combined, uh, you know, tw- what is it, 14 touchdowns. Unfortunately, Ali Jennings was hurt all year long, so it was really up to these two guys. But this offense, they looked doomed at the beginning of the season. They, they could not move the ball. It was really upsetting to watch. But once they made the decision to go to the Baylor transfer, they didn't look back one bit. This team started off the season very poor. They were 1-4 and four with their one win coming against Old Dominion. And like you said, the offense was stagnant. It looked like they had totally lost it. But they've turned it around in the second half of the season and able to get bowl eligible here in the second season under their head coach who took over, Brent Pry, who's trying to build something there in Blacksburg. Like you said, the quarterback change to drones was the right move, right? You know, the 58% comp rate's not fantastic, but nearly 2,000 yards passing, 15 touchdowns and three picks, good ratio there. And like you said, he's a big physical guy, 642, 4.4, and four scores. So he can definitely run the ball a whole lot. This offense lost Allie Jennings early in the season, who we expected to be a huge breakout player for this team. And he did have two touchdowns on five grabs in those two games he played. So he was making impacts early on. And he could have been a great player for this team based off those averages. In the end, though, they require, uh, uh, you know, they look at Dequan Felton, who was really solid for them, uh, 667 yards, receiving 17.6 yards per catch and eight scores. Jalen Lane looked really good as well, 524, 14.2 and six scores. Steven Gosnell was solid as well, 348, 15.8 and three scores. They have a good variety here. This team is solid on offense. They're able to run the ball efficiently as well, which was nice. 4.7 4.7 yards per attempt on the ground, 5.91 yards per play. The 28.6 points per game is not a bad total. They had over six yards per carry in four of the final five games. The one outlier being at Louisville, they put up a complete dud in that one. Drones, those really freed things up for Brayshold Tutton, 727 and eight touchdowns for him. Overall, this is an offense that really caught its stride. Uh, very happy with what they have there in the offensive line. Certainly improved uh, as the year went on as well. You look at the Tulane offense, you know, they put up 27 points per game this season. Um, This is a team, you know, we talked about at the end of the season when we talked about the UTSA and the SMU game, how they've had a lot of close calls really for the last two months, really the entire season. You know, I finally picked them to win against SMU. And fools on me, Nick, because they lost and they looked awful. Two games in a row, this offense has just not been good at all. Nine for 22 for Michael Pratt against UTSA, 58% completion rate with 238 and a pick in that game. Um, You know, Michael Pratt, this is a guy whose completion rating is certainly taking a big nose up compared to in years past, 65%, 22 touchdowns and five picks, five rushing touchdowns as well. Um, but, you know, for being a senior veteran leader, Nick, what they had at home against SMU against a backup quarterback was absolutely disgusting. And that makes, you know, five games in a row they've had 370 yards or less. This is embarrassing. I don't really know what to say, especially with the veteran they have under center. This offense has taken a complete back seat for this team, and it's been the defensive story the last couple of weeks. This team, like you said, was hanging on by a thread. They were, you know, struggled against UTSA at home, and then it finally, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back was against SMU, where they lost in the conference title game at home to end the season. Willie Fritz bolts. He heads to Houston, and now this team is kind of just picking up the pieces here in this bowl game against Virginia Tech. 26.8 points per game. 4.13 yards per attempt on the ground and 5.86 yards per play. This team was scoring at a high rate early in the season, right? 37 points against South Alabama, 20 points in a loss to Ole Miss, 21, 36, 35, 31. But then it just nosedived in the season, 13, 24, 24, 
29 and 14. So it took a tough turn at the end of the season. Pratt, you expected more of the senior leader who returned. The 65% comp rate's good. 2,400 yards is not good enough. 22 touchdowns, you expect a little bit more. The five picks, he was good about his control and his accuracy this year, which I'm proud to see, and I'm happy to see that his improvement in accuracy and cut down on the interceptions as well as the, the uh, completion percentage was solid. But this offense, really, you expected a lot more of this high-flying two-lane offense in the preseason. Yeah, back-to-back -back years with five interceptions for him. The receiving room also, you know, certainly can't be unnoted. Lawrence Keys, Jaquan Jackson really hurt at the end of the year. Jackson, they got back against SMU. Keys, they're still hoping he can make an appearance in this bowl game. Chris Brazell, the other leading pass catcher, he's in the transfer portal. Bill Keith Brown, the former Texas A&M product, he's looking to get a lot more touches. Alex Ballman, uh, their fifth leading pass catcher, he's also in the portal. So the wheels really are continuing to fall off. Makai Hughes, though, was a pleasant surprise. You know, a nice power back, vintage old school runner, five and a half yards per attempt. Seven touchdowns, 1,290 total yards on the ground. 156 yards as a team. They don't really, you know, you know, he's really a bell cow. They don't really, you know, spread it out too much. It's really just him and Pratt leading the way. This running game is supposed to be an identity really for them. They look good against UTSA, carried the way there, was awful against SMU, which we kind of figured, you know, the SMU defense would be an opportunity for them to prove they were legit. Uh, and, you know, fool's gold really picking against them because that defense was flat out elite. Uh, and, you know, against FAU, they only had 84 yards. And the running game's really just not been that all that consistent. In the games, they put up 200-plus rushing in, though. They've been able to score 30 points in those contests, them being victories as well. Um, you know, what do you make of this Tulane rushing attack, Nick? It's far from what it was with Tajay Spears, but he was, he's done his role. Losing Spears was definitely a tough blow. Obviously, he made his move to the NFL, rightfully so. He's continuing to improve his uh, standing in the league. You know, Makai Hughes was supposed to take over and be that bell cow back, and he definitely did carry the ball around, right? Nearly 1,300 yards on the ground, 5.3, and seven touchdowns. Pratt, nearly 300 yards and five scores, but only 12 rushing touchdowns between the two of them, a few others here and there. You thought you'd see more on the ground from this team. Only 15 rushing touchdowns on the season is not really good enough. They relied on Pratt's arm a little too much, and I think it caused some unbalance with this team. They have some nice receivers playing, like Lawrence Keyes, Jaquan Jackson. Those are solid players. You know, Keyes especially, 600 yards receiving, 18.2 yards per grab and seven scores but i think this team lost its identity on offense and that's where the real started to come off so offensive line led by a good center and sincere hayworth the tackle position is not really all that stout though so they certainly are less than desirable in pass protection looking at these defenses you know this is a team of virginia tech you know i had their over five and a half wins this year started off very poor made a great rally at the end of the season really in the back half of the year not just due to some of the offensive emergence of drones well this defense was also able to do you know it certainly wasn't perfect by any means and they had some games that really got roughed up in um but they showed they could play competent football especially against teams like boston college and syracuse and wake forest and those aren't you know the greatest offenses by any means um but you know the hold the Q's to zero rushing yards. I mean, that's flat out dominant right there. Boston College only 262 total yards, and they've been really carving people up. Uh, you know, Virginia was on a tear, 286. They beat them by a dozen, you know, like a million at home. Um, so the defense certainly did falter, like in games against Louisville and NC State, which, you know, the consistency level wasn't certainly there. Um, but considering how they started early on in the year, this was a horrible run defense. They were absolutely awful. You gave it up about 150 yards per game now on the season. And even Louisville was able to really piece them up. But they settled down in a lot of those games. The ones they won, these guys were strong up front, you know, led by Antoine Powell Ryland. It looks like he will be playing in this game, 13 and a half TFL this year. Phil Darius Payne, Nebraska transfer comes over. He's phenomenal. Norrell Pollard, uh, you know, Mario Kendrick, some legit talent here on this defensive line. And at times they really showed it. And then here in this game against Tulane, where the offensive line hasn't really been able to pave ways for him. I think this defensive line, along with Alan Tisdale and Kelly Lawson at linebacker, they should be able to slow down Hughes and whatever, you know, physicality they try to bring to the table here and they can make them one-dimensional. I certainly expect this Virginia Tech front part of this defense to have success here. Like you said, Lawson is a really good linebacker leading this team with 77 total tackles, six tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. Tisdale, 68 total tackles, three tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. Good numbers there. There are some other nice production from this front part of this defense. I think, you know, they have gotten the right guys out of the portal. They made some quick moves to get pieces in there that needed to be in there. You know, I think Antoine Powell has been fantastic. You know, 39 total tackles, 13 and a half tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks. Good numbers. Cole Nelson, 24 total tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. Keonta Jenkins, 44 total tackles, one and a half tackles for loss in that star position. He gets moved around a lot. He's a good leader for this team. Fidarius Payne, 29 total tackles, nine tackles for loss, and four sacks. So there is some serious and nice production here. This is a defense 
that is a, as a solid unit, right? You know, 24.3 points per game, I don't think is reflective because of the lopsided losses they suffered in the, the early part of the season. And, you know, a bad lopsided loss to Louisville 34 to three really raised that 4.2 yards per attempt given up by this defense and, and 5.18 yards per play. Not bad numbers at all. This is a respectable defense. It's one of the top pass defenses in the country as well. 320 attempts. That's certainly a very low number. 61% completion percentage isn't all that great either. Um, but at the end of the day, I think they still went out there and played pretty good ball. Gave up, you know, 200 yards only a couple of times this year. Didn't top the 250 mark once this year. So the secondary, for the most part, they don't give up big plays. They certainly play good on this side of the ball. with Guys like Dorian Strong, uh, you know, a veteran. And, you know, Derek Canteen won't be playing in this game. He's transferring, but he was pretty good for them. Mansoor Delane didn't certainly have the same magic that he did last year. They still got good players in the back end there. You look know, at this Tulane defense, uh, you know, 19 points per game. You know, this is a big reason why I thought they would win the conference is just the ability they have with their defensive line and their, uh, you know, abilities against the run. Devon Deal, top leading TFL guy, transferring. So it's up to guys like Patrick Jenkins and Darius Hodges who are highly productive. Keith Cooper as well. I mean, this is a really good defensive line. Cameron Hamilton, big fan of his. Um, but trying to get some production, at least from Negative plays will be tough. Pass rush, I'm not really all that worried about. Um, but this run defense is just flat out strong this season. But they're coming off their worst two games of the year. 177 against UTSA, 184 against SMU. Two worst yardage totals they've given up all season. Only four games this year, 100 plus yards allowed on the ground. Three yards per attempt, 11 touchdowns. Um, you know, even though they weren't all that elite in the last two games, Nick, they were still pretty good, you know, four yards per carry over the last two uh, a lot of volume from those rushing attacks. This is still an elite run defense, but it's going to be interesting to see how they try and defend the QB run. His drones has plenty of size and speed, always falling forward. That versatility should be something to watch here, especially if after your top TFL guy. This is a very nice defense overall. 18.9 points per game, 3.08 yards per attempt on the ground, 5.11 yards per play. Losing your top TFL guy, you know, that's definitely a big blow for this defense. And obviously when you lose the sort of production that he was able to provide, that's a problem for this defense. I think that's certainly something we're going to note. But outside of that, there is some nice production here that you can work with. Patrick Jenkins is a fantastic leader for this team. 32 total tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks for him. Darius Hodgins is another solid piece for this team. He really works hard in the trenches. 25 total tackles, 9.5 tackles for loss, 7.5 sacks for him. I think those are impressive numbers. Tyler Grubbs, 20, uh, 75 total tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, 3 sacks for him. Jared Small, 51 total tackles, 3.5 sacks for loss, 2 sacks. Cam uh, Cameron Hamilton, 24 total tackles, 6 tackles for loss, 4 sacks. There is still enough production here, in my opinion. Against the run, this is a team that's giving up less than 100 yards per game. They do have enough production in the trenches, I think, to get the job done when all, when all is said and done. But it's certainly tough to lose some of those high-productive players uh, to the portal. This is a good second year overall as well. They've certainly given up some more production through the air. Playing ahead, I think, in some of these games certainly allowed the opponents who had more passing attempts to kind of run up the yards a little bit. You know, against SMU, they were playing a backup, and they were able to take advantage of him you know, in his youth on a couple of interceptions, but they did give up a few big plays. It was just kind of inexcusable how SMU was really able to just move the ball downfield. 65% opponent completion rating is not good at all. Cam Pettis lacks, you know, has safety. Great in coverage. Jarius Monroe, big fan of his at corner. Lance Robinson on the other side is very stout as well. So they certainly do have a strong secondary. Overall, this is a great defense, Nick. They held Ole Miss in check for the most part. You know, obviously, uh, you know, in that second half, they couldn't get anything going. It was really a last, late last drive heroics by Dart. And then, you know, a fumble six there, like a minute to go to put that one out of reach. But they really held Ole Miss back in check. I know that was all the way in week two, but I mean, they were consistent all year long. This is a great defense. This is a great defense. I think this is a unit that has strong productivity against the pass. You know, Lance Robinson's a great leader, 39 total tackles, four interceptions, seven pass breakups. Jarius Monroe, 48 total tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, three picks, 10 pass breakups. So there are some nice production here. I think it's a solid unit, 17 interceptions to 16 uh, touchdown completions, only 11 touchdowns get up on the ground. So this is a stingy defense. They have held teams to low count. You know, Southern Miss, three points. Florida Atlantic, eight points. Nichols State, their FCS with seven points. So this team can hold teams to a low scoring if they if they have to, and I think this is an opportunity for them against a team like Virginia Tech, where if they can hold them to a low-scoring affair, they might have a chance to win the game. My final thoughts and the prediction. For VT, keep Tulane off balance with your QB run. Pressure Michael Pratt. I think for Tulane, you've got to find some creativity on offense, even if you're not fully healthy. I mean, this has just been really poor the last month of the season. This offense is really just nowhere to be found, and it's a miracle they were 
able to stay on beat for as long as they were. I think that's the biggest problem here is I think Virginia Tech and the bookies, they're aware that this Tony team's really not that good despite their record. This offensive of veteran quarterback is pitiful, you know, regardless if they're fully healthy or not. And that certainly has led to a big downfall. And, you know, they're at least going to be without their top receiver in this one. I think that's going to be a big problem for them. Some of the defensive departures, not great. I think the defense will certainly play a tough game. I think VT will be able to stay on the field a good bit. I think they're going to force a couple of three now. It really just seems to be a staple at this point of the Tulane offense. You just really can't manufacture anything. So, I mean, this is a team that got away with a lot of them, Nick. They played a lot of close games for a long time. Finally bid them at home against SMU. And it's not going to be any better here in Annapolis. This is certainly a tough matchup. You know, Virginia Tech should travel well to Annapolis. It's not terribly, terribly far from Blacksburg. You know, in the past, some of the local teams like Navy and Virginia have played at this stadium in this bowl game and have had good crowds. I expect Virginia Tech fans to travel pretty decently well here. Tulane, this would be a disappointing end of the season. Their coach has left, but like you said, they've been just flirting with danger for the better uh, better part of the last couple of months. You know, East Carolina only beat them by three. They barely limped by, you know, a Florida Atlantic team that's not very good. They struggled to beat UTSA to clinch a berth in the conference title game and then lost the conference title game to SMU for backup quarterback. And now they play this Virginia Tech team that has a lot to gain from here. You know, a bowl win in the second season under Brent Pry would be a good a uh, good sign of things to come for this Hokies team. I think they're going to be more motivated for this team. You know, bowl season a lot about the team, which is more motivated than the other one. I think the Hokies are more motivated, and they have a great opportunity here to beat Tulane and get a respectable win in this bowl game. That's going to be it for today's episode. I think Tulane will probably hang in there and cover there still an 11-win team, um, but we'll just see what happens there. Wouldn't bank on it too hard. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. <sighs>